Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Today, we have another special guest. We have Vic, who is one of the moderators at MIC. Um, Vic is pretty cool because when he joined MIC, from, from what I gather, he, he didn't have too much pre-knowledge in trading. Um, and he's really cool because he stuck to the MIC process, found a great tab, and kind of moved his way into the super great, profitable, successful trader. So I've been pretty excited to have him on. So thank you for coming on, Vic. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm really glad we're doing this in the morning because otherwise Harry would have me fucking hammered in no time. <laughs> yep. So <laughs> we're doing the market right now. I got a few trades going on. This is like we want to do it in the morning. So, so right? cool. So, if you wanted to kind of give a, a quick little background about yourself, you know, how you found trading and, um, you know, how you got into MIC and what you were kind of doing beforehand. Yeah. I mean, well, my, my love for trading, right. The reason why I wanted to trade started many, many years ago. Uh, but I never really had the opportunity to really get the right education, the right avenue to get involved and, and really understand what I was doing. I, uh, I read a book by a guy by the name of Larry Williams. He said, it was basically the title was like how he made a million dollars trading futures. And that was literally like decades ago. I'm old as fuck. So <laughs> that was a really long time ago. <clears throat> and that got me like interested. And then I saw the movie uh, uh, Trading Spaces. Oh, I, love <laughs> I know, right? And I was like, fuck yeah, dude, I can trade futures and make millions. I mean, fucking riches sitting on a beach. <laughs> Pork bellies. Right, exactly. And I was like, and, and orange juice, I like, okay, so I, I looked into it and I tried to understand it. And I was like, you know, I was so early in even my civilian career and everything else I was doing. I just didn't have the funds to really go after it. And there was nobody really teaching anything. There was no education out there. So it just kind of like, I'm not going to say fell to the wayside, but, you know, I, I really pursued my real career, everything that pushed me forward uh, to get me to the point where I am today. And then, you know, here I am, I, I find MIC and I'm a skeptical motherfucker, man. I mean, you, you know, when you guys, when we get together, like in person, I'll tell you all the shit that I fucking know and, and <laughs> the things I do. Right. So I, I do secret squirrel shit and whatnot, you know, so I'm, I'm a skeptical dude. And when I see like Alex come on to, you know, Facebook with his advertisement and join MIC or you're a fucking loser, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, all right, fuck it. You know, what do I got to lose? Let me check these guys out and see what's going on. I, so I called the number that Tosh has on the thing and, you know, Tosh doesn't answer the number all the time. So I'm like, fuck, these guys don't return my phone calls. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> so yeah. I sent him a text. I'm like, hey, dude, I called you, left you a voicemail. He's like, yeah, bro. I only answer text. Fuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he hooked me up. He's like, look, uh -huh. he's like, just try a month. Try, try a monthly membership. And if you like it, stay if you don't then at least you found out and i was like all right fuck it what's a month you know yeah. and uh and that's how i got started that's how i how i kind of came into mic and then from there it was just kind of a a snowball effect it was when i joined mic early in 2020 it was before covid really hit so i was looking around you know trying to figure out how am i going to really study and maintain my my day job because my day job is is busy as hell and uh if anybody is counts the number of f bombs I do in this podcast, uh, I'll review your charts for like three fucking days straight. So, um, yeah, if was, um, <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. Now everyone's gonna go back. I know and everyone's gonna be like, "Fuck, I'm counting that shit, dude." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Vic, does that long, one count? How, Vic, how long were you in the service for? Uh, I spent 22 years in the service. Jesus, dude, good for you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it was a long cool. fucking haul. So you found trading just kind of like through, you know, just through like finding like movies and like those books and like stuff like that. That was the only thing. It wasn't like, that's when I saw that. Yeah. Like trading was a real thing. I'm like, that's funny. Fuck, people, people do this shit. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's how I kind of figured it out. And I was like, fuck. Okay. So then yeah, I found my way to my scene. I'm, and I, I realized that my, uh, my learning curve was very short. I went from here to here, you know, in yeah. a very short period of time. Most people it's a, it's a little bit longer. Yeah. And, but, but I attribute that a lot to my discipline. You know, the discipline that I learned in, the military, uh, the discipline that I've learned in my day-to-day -day life and things that I do. So when I was on my way to work, I put a video on in a car and listen to it. So I'd be listening to Joe going over the tr basic trading series, you know, and just listening to it. And then when I hear things that like, oh, 
I need to go back and watch that so I can see what's happening on the screen. I come home that evening, spin it back up and go through it a second time to see what's happening. Yeah. And th that's how my education started into this thing. And then, you know, I just kept digging into it and digging into it. Then COVID hit and I was like, fuck, I got time, bro. So yep. then I really dug into it and spent quality time going into the videos. I didn't ask questions like my first two and a half, three months because I was like, I'm not asking questions. I'll sound like a fucking idiot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even I don't even remember you joining in the first like before COVID. Like I didn't even know that you were like a member. We have a ton of people who just come in, join. They don't really participate in the main chat. They're not really looking for any sort of attention. They're just, you know, coming in to learn. They want to see what's up. They read the main chat. They don't necessarily participate. They don't participate in after hours. And I mean, we have like right now we're at like on this day, we're at 2,300 people, almost 2,400. And how many of those people, um, you know, are, are participating active. actively in the main chat? A lot of people yeah. are learning. So we do have this kind of silent majority of yeah. people learning and just chilling. So I honestly think that that is, that can be a good way to really jumpstart your, your learning is, you know, um, using the community if you need it, but also yeah. if you're good, if you're a good learner that way, like kind of Vic is, um, that's another way to go about it, you know? And that's not really, that's not, I, I, there's no right or wrong way, but I think that that is like, that's another good avenue that a lot of people have mentioned on this podcast, you know? Yeah, I, mean, I agree. It's okay. Well, okay. I just want to interject real quick because it's funny to me that the most successful people that like everyone wants to get into trading and make money really quick. But it's like nobody wants to like put their head down and like bury into the work really quickly. They always want to like jump, <clears throat> jump right into trading and making money. So like what I noticed with you and uh, Vic's, one of Vic's tabs was uh, a woman named Faye. They just put their head down and they were just work. It was just focused on that. That was it. Nothing else. And then you notice that these are the people that they're putting out the P&Ls now that are like 2,000, 3,000. You know, it's like you, you learned the right way and you actually just put your head down and like focused on it and like. I think that's really, really good. How did yeah, you? Oh, go okay. ahead. sorry. No, no, go ahead, man. <laughs> how did you, uh, how'd you uh, meet Faye? Like, do you want to kind of go about that journey? Sure. So, matter of fact, I had a conversation with uh, another member in the group uh, or in the club uh, about how this happened and kind of gave him some pointers as to how to go find a tab. So, when I was in the group and, and in the main chat, you know, I'd see Faye posting and I saw that she was, she was really, she was doing well, right? She wasn't like, posting like large P&Ls and shit, but she was consistent. She was asking good questions and she seemed like somebody who was just about where I was within my, uh, my journey becoming a trader. So I was also looking for a tab at the time. And, you know, I, I talked to Woody and he was trying to link me up with somebody. And so I just hit Faye up. I'm like, Hey, uh, so I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but would you like to be on my tab? And she's like, Sure. Let me ask the other guy I'm, I'm currently linked up with. And then maybe we'll invite you in. I'm like, fuck, cool. Okay. And then sure enough, later that afternoon, sure. Join the group. So there was three of us in the group. Uh, me and the Faye were probably the, you know, the most active. Uh, another gentleman by the name of Kevin, super nice guy. Uh, and he was just, he was kind of in that same point of his, his journey. And that's how I, that's how I met Faye. That's how I ended up finding for me the right tab was I saw somebody who was at a similar level that I was at, a similar point in their journey, and I, the attitude just seemed right. And we clicked immediately. And from there, it was just, the rest is history, literally. Did you guys, push, did you like push each other to like study harder and stuff? Like, was it, was it like very balanced that way? Or like, how did you guys like kind of come? Because again, you guys, I think it just both of you came into this so quick. And that that is... It is kind of rare to see. So, like, I think what was, like, the driving factor into that? So, uh, I think me and Faye were really good at research and mm -hmm. a analytical stuff, right? So, Faye would go out and she would dig into other videos and then she would, like, send over a video like, hey, look, this is a good one on this specific topic. And so, mm -hmm. we would dig into that. And on my side, I was really good at just at figuring shit out um, yeah. because of my engineering background. So, like – Things like understanding the level two a little bit deeper, understanding some of the things that are happening in the tape. Uh, you know, you listen to Bow talk about how the tape's not really necessary, but there are there are clues. There are yeah. things in there, like the ball going up in the air, slowing down, it stops, and then it comes back down. Those kinds of things. So 
I would talk about those kinds of things and we would share ideas and information back and forth about things that we're learning. Mm -hmm. So I would find something out. She would find something out. We come together, we talk about it, and then we start applying it. And that's really what I think pushed us in that direction further. That's what kept that catalyst going. We didn't just go off in our separate directions, figure shit out and do it on our own. We literally worked as a team to keep pushing each other a little bit further with things that I was figuring out. And then she'd figure some shit out and I'm like, well, fuck, I want to know that shit too. So, yeah. you know, and I'm competitive. So that kind of drew, that kind of drove that a little bit. So I would dig into it a little bit deeper because she was pushing stuff at me and she's like, Hey, check this out. So she's, you know, start digging into the options a little bit, you know, and saying, here's, here's some good info on the options stuff. We both attended the options boot camp by Joe. That was huge. Um, you know, so stuff like that. It was just, it was a really good uh, synergy that we had between like us pushing it back and forth. And that was, that was a big piece of it. I think that really helped move us down that road faster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, Better. I think um, a lot, like, like, cause Bao's an engineer as well by, by, you know, by trade. Yeah. And that, I think that engineering degree helped Bao a lot with his trading and figuring shit out and, um, you know, just even simple shit with the velocity and stuff like that. Like, you know, that is where his trading or his engineering degree can't get a trading degree yet. Um, that's, that's we're where, issuing them next week. <laughs> yeah, that's where uh, I think it helped them a lot. Um, if if there were like, um, you know, what what do you think it was just like the the work ethic and study of the engineering, or do you think it was more so a lot of the technical side that helped you out? Because I've always kind of had this question with a lot of engineers is like. Did you find it was more so the, the technical side or was it the discipline that you had to put in your degree or was it more so like building things and, and figuring shit out like that? I was just kind of wondering. So it's, it's interesting that you say that because I, I never really thought about it that way. And there were times where I thought uh, my engineering background would be is actually a hurdle yeah. uh, because I want to know so many details. And some of those details really aren't that important. Uh, when it comes to trading, like when you see when you see a big soak happening on a price, sure, it's it's noticeable and it's something to pay attention to. But, you know, for the reasons why it's happening, who's fucking doing it, how big is the fucking order, you know, all those things, how much volumes actually happen there. It, it's not it. There is no one thing that matters that much more than something else. Right. Yeah. When it comes to those things. So being an engineer, you know, I would dig into those details and I'd be like, fuck, I want you know, and that, those things I would catch myself on and be like, fuck, dude, I really don't need to know that level of detail. It's not that important. Yeah. Uh, later, I can dig into it if I want to, just for my own curiosity's sake. So I think early, early on, I think having my engineering background, definitely the discipline uh, with having to you know, be focused on details enough to put pieces together, knowing that I can't just jump in knowing one thing. I have to jump in knowing multiple things that put a system together, yeah. right? Because that's what engineering is all about. Engineering isn't just engineering one thing. Engineering is engineering pieces that come together to make an entire process or, you know, box or whatever it is. Yeah. And I think, I think that really is what helps from an engineering perspective, right? Is that, you know, you can't go in just saying, okay, I understand the chart. I understand this is support. I understand this is resistance. And that's what I'm going to do, yeah. you know? You understand those things. Now you need to understand, okay, there's also volume that comes into play. And then there's also the trade management piece of this or the risk management piece of this to know how to size your trades. Yeah. Those three things right there is enough to get you moving in the right direction, making good trades. But you can't take just volume and make good trades. You can't just take risk management and make good trades. You can't take just support and resistance and make good trades. You need a couple of pieces of things to put together in a process yeah. That's what helps you to start making good trades. And I think that's really uh, what engineers bring to the table from a understanding perspective that allow them to kind of progress down that path yeah. with less hurdles uh, than other folks. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's a good, you know, because I get a lot of questions from members too, where like, I think that was a perfect explanation of that because that really makes sense to me now. And yeah. I get a lot of questions from members where like, let's say for instance, uh, you know, you have two members, one member, I, I get these questions a lot where they're like, oh, well, I'm just going to trade off support and resistance. 
And yes, you can do that. Like no one's saying that you can't do that. But you know, the next step is going to be stock selection, right? And um, you know, so you get one member who's a short seller. And I get a lot of short sellers too, because they're interested in what I'm thinking as far as the long side as well. Sure. And so, you know, we have one member who's trying to short the hot chick off a, a daily resistance or maybe the, the pre-market high and that didn't work out, got stopped out. And he's like, well, I'm using the resistance. What's, what's the problem? And it's like, well, now you need to dig deeper and look at the stock selection. You know, Alex in his watch list every day is saying, don't short the hot chick, don't short the hot chick. So if you're combining a broken stock with a little bit of volume, with support and resistance, that is going to be a winning recipe. Whereas if you're just trying to cherry pick here and there and then try and say the process isn't working, well, for someone like me, I'm like, okay, well, you're not, you're not digging deep enough, you know? And right. I, when you're talking about the details and the little, uh, you know, the, the little things that you find, that sounds exactly like me. You know, I'm not like an engineer at all by any stretch. I did business, but that sounds like me because you're always kind of hunting to, uh, it's like a snowball effect, right? You know, you yeah. start with a tiny snowball and then as you kind of build and learn and grow, the snowball of your knowledge really grows and then you can build a snowman, right? So exactly. Yeah. And it's, yeah. I talk to traders all the time and uh, you know, they're, they, they get so hung up on like wanting to know so many things in the beginning when you really don't need to know everything in the beginning. There are key pieces that are absolutely important for getting started and moving in the right direction and taking that first trade. And those things are found in the accelerator course. Yeah. And if they just follow that piece of it, it'll be, it'll be huge. And it'll take them to that, that first step of making some good trades and getting them, you know, in, on the right road to being profitable and being a good trader it's just like anything else. It's all about the work you put into it. If you put, if you work at it, you're going to be good at it. Baseball players don't show up, you know, 10 minutes to practice and be like, fuck it, I'm going to be good. You know, they fucking work at it and work at it and work at it. And that's what anybody who's good at it might, I'm good at my day job because I work my fucking ass off to get there. And that's why I'm so valued and paid so well is because I'm so good at it. And nobody gets to that level without, you know, just going to Starbucks every fucking day and then showing up to work and, sitting on her ass and asking stupid questions yeah it's, it's true and i think i think a lot of people too <clears throat> they when they watch like the accelerator and like the trading fish like i think in those two videos alone they give you enough technical background to like learn like like how bow trades and like kind of like the us uh, a very good glimpse into the mic process like i have a lot of people ask me about bow like how does he do it how does he do it and it's like I think people with that like technical mind and that like hardworking mind early on, because if, if everyone just watches that last IG live where Bao talks about why he quit his um, engineering job, it's the same thing. It's like they put in enough work early on, they have this technical mind and they can put like a rhyme to reason to what they do in their trades. And that kind of pushes these people into being profitable so much quicker. And yeah. it's like, kind of like people show up and they're like, like I, I watch the videos now, I watch the video, now what? How, why do I short here? What, give me the tape, give me this, give me that. And I like that you are kind of explaining it as more of a puzzle piece that like is like a little bit of hard work, a little bit of like technicals and like what you got to figure out. And like, I think that's really helped you get to where you are now. And, yeah. and something I wanted to comment on that <clears throat> about you that I really, I'm, I'm impressed by and I like is you're not afraid to trade like super small size, like randomly, like you'll be like, oh, see, I made 50 bucks here, 50 bucks here. And then the next thing you know, you're up 2000 or, or $3,000 or something right. like that. How did you get yourself to that point that mentally, because I think, you know, it's one thing, it's impressive that you made it even to be profitable quick. It's another thing to get the mindset right that early too. So yeah. how did you do that? Like what kind of brought you to this, this step? <clears throat> Oddly enough. So when I first started, uh, like putting my first trades on, <laughs> my lines sucked. I was horrible. I was early on, yeah. on trades. And so once I figured out that I was just being early on trades, I started sizing down. And, you know, sizing down e even more than what I was already sized down as, you know, I wasn't trading, you know, a thousand shares, 2000 shares, 10,000 yep. shares, anything like that, but I was trading, you know, a hundred shares, 200 shares. Yep. And, you know, that like 500 shares was like my max size. Cause I wasn't willing to put any on, on any more than that. Um, so early on, my lines were absolutely horrible. I was always early to the party and just figuring shit out. And then once I kind of figured that out, like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit early in some of these things. I need to look at some things a little bit better. 
understand the lines a little bit better. And I keep going back. I'd always go back and match my lines to Alex's lines when he starts drawing lines on his uh, his his uh, watch list videos yep. that he would put out. And mm-hmm. then also on the the watch list itself. Now he doesn't he doesn't do the videos much anymore, but he does still put the list out. And he's drawing li- and he's saying what prices he's interested at. And then I I go back and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, checking that out. I think a combination of that, and then you know, now my goal is, and anybody's goal, honestly, is when you get into a trade. To start that trade off, I dip my toe in the water yep. because, you know, while the the edge is on our side, you never know what's going to happen. You don't know what's happening behind the scenes, right? This is the other reasons that things happen, right? Somebody turns on an algo, somebody comes yep. in and buys 80 billion shares of his fucking stock and the thing rips right through you. Well, if I dip my toe in the water, sure, it, it's it's going to stink a tiny, tiny bit. It's better yep. to stick in my whole fucking leg in the pool than have it a bit off by a shark. Yeah. And and that's where I think um, some people can take some stuff away is just just dip your toe in the water. You know, that initial trade. If you're if your size on any trade is gonna be five hundred shares, well, that first trade should be like fifty shares. Throw fifty yeah. shares at it. If it starts to confirm and starts to really firm up, then add some more size to it. And then, you know, as it further moves in your direction. Now you're adding to a winner, add a little more size. And that's, that is really one of the things I think uh, that helped me understand even deeper, the whole risk management side of it. Because if I can keep my losses as small as possible, and then when a trade confirms and firms up on the theory that I have on this thing, and I can just add more size to it and capitalize on those gains, but minimize my risk by dipping my toe in the water, now my losses are fucking tiny. But on the flip side, if it works out and it hits, it hits a target and I'm out. Oh, fuck it. I'm out. You know, I made 50, 60 bucks, whatever. No yeah. big deal. But all that shit adds up at the end of the day. Yeah. And I, I think some traders who see this stuff and see the things that I'm doing, uh, they see how quickly it can add up. Yeah. And yeah. once they start seeing how quickly, you know, three, four trades of 50, 60 bucks each, all of a sudden, you know, I'm up 240 bucks for the day, made a couple of trades, super tiny size. And they're like, fuck dude 200 bucks would like fucking change my entire fucking life 200 bucks a day is a fuck ton of money <laughs> you know it's no, nobody realizes how much money that is if you count like 20 trading days in the in the month that's four grand yeah you know how yeah. much would four grand change somebody's life for making a car payment making a mortgage payment or just having that extra money to put aside to take a really nice vacation yeah. all those yeah. kinds of things if people would start thinking smaller instead of thinking bigger and looking for the lambo <clears throat> they would, you know, change the way that their mindset is. And that's, I mean, that's, I think that's another thing that really helps too, is that, you know, I don't have to trade. I could stay at my day job and I'm <clears throat> comfortable. I mean, I make good money. I don't have to do it, but the supplemental income that I'm bringing in through trading, why wouldn't I do it? Right. Yeah. I mean, I can capitalize on my supplemental trading, bring in another six figures and I can do a fuck ton more in my retirement years and kick back and have a lifestyle that most of the retirees my age are gonna be like, fuck, dude, how do you do that? Taking yeah. trips all around the world, doing my thing. A hundred percent. I I think that I think it, it irritates the shit out of me that people get into trading so for the wrong reasons. Like, of course, like everyone wants to make millions of dollars, and like it is all possible. Like, honestly, yep. like the MIC process is like that groundwork for that, but. It's like people forget, like, it's like people are making 50 grand a year. And then like, if they're trading and they're making like 500 a day, like that's not enough. And it's like, but you're making your yearly <laughs> salary. So, like you're not even understanding how important that is. Like, like I had a nice day yesterday and like I, and I was happy with it. And I've like trained my brain now to just be like, dude, whatever you make in trading is obviously better than mo- 99% of people are making in the world. And it's like, dude, if you make $100 in a day, I mean, I went out last night, I got a fat steak, I got a side, I got a salad, I got drinks, right? 150 bucks or something like that. And it's like, you can make that trading with your eyes closed. Yeah. You know, it's true. It's like people lose that sight of that. And I think it's cool that you're like, oh, I made 50 bucks, I made 50 bucks, and then boom, a thousand, boom, like whatever. Right. So I think that's, that's really, really key for you. And I think that, especially as you trade bigger and bigger and like grow, it's like that fifty dollar trades are going to be the hundred dollars, and then it'll be like two thousand, four thousand, whatever. Exactly. So it's cool, and I I like how you've explained trading as a whole. I think for new traders, like they, you guys need to pull yourselves back and see where Vic is coming from. You know, one, I think it, Vic, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking. I'm fi- I just just turned fifty one. Fifty one. So Vic's fifty one. He's in service. I mean, he has a day job. 
And I had never heard him bitch and moan about videos. I've never heard him bitch and moan about putting in the work. He, not only has he done all that, he's also put in extra work to become like a moderator and all this stuff. So I just, it's crazy to me to hear people bitch and complain. I fucking hate it. <laughs> I fucking hate it, dude. I hate it. Yeah. And then it's like, we talk to people like you and it's like, all right, now whenever I DM someone like that, I'm going to be like, bro, you're going to have to watch this episode and then kind of promptly shut up and like, <laughs> like start working. Like get, right. get to the info is there. If people just, if people just take a step back, and look, you, you said it right. Everybody wants to come into trading and make a million dollars. That's everybody's fucking dream. But your dream has to t start with the first step, and that first step has to be a realistic step, and that realistic step has to be I need to make fifty bucks a day, and then from there, okay, I've made fifty bucks a day. Now that fifty turns into sixty, turns into eighty, turns into a hundred, hundred and twenty. And it takes time. And everybody's progression to go from that 50 bucks a day to 500 bucks a day is going to be different. And it's okay. There is no expectation that you have to come into this on day one and make $500, $1,000 a day right out of the fucking gate. That's yep. – people set unrealistic expectations on themselves. And yep. you just need to take – you know, reel it in a little bit and come back and say, man, you know what? I made, I made 30 bucks a day trading 200 shares. Fuck, dude. Good on you. Because yeah. how many other people are sitting around making – how many people make 30 bucks an hour? Not, many, not a lot. <laughs> right. Think about that, right? So when you want to think about what kind of money you're making in that first hour of trading, I spent from 9.30 to 10.30, and I made 30 bucks an hour. It's think true. about that shit, right? True. And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, okay, I'm making 30 bucks an hour, and I'm only working one hour a day. Yeah, you keep then that, that turns into a catalyst of I'm making three hundred dollars an hour for an hour a day, you yeah. know, it, and it just that's what it becomes, and you just have to be able to take the time and you know take that first spoon of of hard work, yeah, suck it down, and then keep doing it right, keep repeating that, and yeah. one of the other things I think people do too, uh, which really I wish they wouldn't do, is once they start to find a little success, they start changing things. They, they change what they're doing a little bit. And just by doing that, it all of a sudden throws a wrench in the process. Now they went from being a profitable trader to being a losing trader. And it's because they changed something. Don't change anything, right? Yep. When, it's, when it's time for any individual trader to size up more, you'll know. You will yep. absolutely know. And you'll know how much to size up. It'll just happen organically. It'll happen naturally. And you'll figure it out on your own as you're going through this process. If you start out trading like... My max size is 200 shares and your fucking first, you know, your first entry into the market is 20 shares. That's what it is. Then as you grow, if all of a sudden you're, you're making consistent profits every day, you're making 20, 30, 40 bucks a day. Now, all of a sudden, I'm going to change my starter size from 20 shares to 100 shares. Nope. Wrong fucking answer. Right. That's the wrong fucking answer. <laughs> if you want to size up, you should be sizing up 10 percent of whatever your starter is. That like will that. put a realistic level on you to keep it simple, right? Yep. And, and give you a little bit more size, but not without biting off more than you can chew. Because when you bite off more than you chew, more than you can chew, you end up, you know, putting your, your mind in a different place. You start having a little bit more emotion in the game and your, your palms get sweaty, your fucking heart starts beating, you're fucking stressed out. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't put the extra stress on yourself if you don't have to. If you're comfortable trading 25 shares as your starter, trade 25 shares and eventually, Trade 27 shares, whatever. You know, who gives a flying fuck? Nobody, yeah. there, there is no written rule that says your starter has to be at least 100 shares. Fuck that, dude. You know, you got to, if your first starter is two shares, then it's two shares. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 yeah. I just wanted to say one thing. I like how you kind of, you know, I think for every person who gets into this, there's some type of reason why. I mean, mostly people are getting in for the money, but. I mean, it's what the money brings. The money brings freedom and the ability to kind of do what you want, right? And it's really important to kind of, uh, I guess, say to yourself, like, like you know, what, what is my goal? Like, for some people, their goal is to put their kids through college. For some people, their goal is to do whatever. It's not necessarily drive a Lambo or be super flashy. I mean, for every single person, there's a reason why they got into it. And I think... It's really good that, you know, you're able to kind of say, my goal is that I want to kind of save for my retirement. You know, I want to keep doing this as kind of supplemental income. And then that's kind of what I want to do, you know. And um, 
you know, I think that that's a, you know, it's, there's no shame in saying your goals and what you want to do. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's no shame in that, you know, you map out a plan, you say, this is what I want to do. And when I fucking retire, you know, this is what's gonna, what's gonna happen or, and this is how I'm going to get there, you know? And so I think for everyone, everyone needs to just kind of map out their goals and, and why they're doing this. And, and maybe that'll stop people from fucking longing broken charts and uh, <laughs> shorting the hot chick. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that would fucking crack pick up at the end. <laughs> we, we always laugh about this in, in chat. So it's just like people are fucking, they're, they're dumb. They, they don't want to put in, they don't want to be patient. They don't want to, they, I don't know. It's, we, it's everything. They go against everything we're saying. They, they want to make the money now. They want wear Lambo and then they want to be like super rich and famous. But like, they don't understand that like most traders started out with this like slow like mindset of like yeah. like 50 shares 100 shares like this and it's like it's crazy it's like it, it irritates me further like this whole podcast is irritating me because it's like i'm hearing someone do exactly what they're supposed to and like look at how quick it snowballed and it's like it's almost like the message of this has has been you put your head down you work you take it slow and yeah. then the fact snowballs build and it's like but instead what people do is they they don't put their head down. They don't take it slow. They make yep. a giant snowball and then it just melts. And they like can't make the snowman. It's like it's like just so it blows my mind that people won't listen to this this process. And and Vic, I think you did an uh, amazing amazing job explaining that. Um, and as we are we are coming up on our time here, but I just wanted to say you know thank you for coming on. I think this is an episode that I feel like every new trader, I feel like new members should watch this over and over until they understand that there is a process there's a path. And as long as you stick on that path, you're going to go down the profitable route. It's when you kind of diverge and like fuck around. That's when you just, that's when you kick the can or whatever down the, down the road, even further, it's just going to take longer and longer to catch up. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, I want to say one more thing about goals that, you know, kind of Harry put out yeah. there is you know, sure. Have that, have that big picture, long-term goal, but in order to get to that goal, you need to have a path. You need to set yourself up with shorter term goals, smaller goals along the way in order to reach that bigger goal. So if your bigger goal is to, you know, replace your, your day job income at some point, right? And that's, that's many new traders dream, right? They want to be able to walk away from their day job and have the freedom to be able to just trade, make money on their own and do their own thing. If that's your ultimate big goal, start out your first goal with just, if you're just starting out, I want to make sure that I have, I want to get to my first one full week of profitability. I have five green days in a row. Yep. Start there. And those, those five green days are just, just small, green, consistent days. Do that. From there, okay, now add on to that. I want to go from five green days to seven green days. And now I want to go to 10 green days. I helped a trader um, in the room. He's a super great guy, prior military. And I gave him some really good information that kind of clicked with him. It clicked with him. He put it to use immediately. And the last time I talked to him a few days ago, he was up 33 green days in a row. Jesus. Because he just took the information to heart. He applied it, paid attention, did the right things. And now he made 33 green fucking days in a row. And that's fucking huge for new guys who were previously struggling and yep. just on that hump of crossing that, that to the other side of just being a little bit more consistent and that hey, consistency is going to carry you through 50 bucks. I mean, look at what that's going to do. Right. Yeah. And that rung true with him. That totally fucking made sense to him. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you're fucking right. I just helped another trader. Uh, and once he saw, he told me what his max size was 500 shares. So I traded with 500 shares and I showed him what was possible. And he's like, fuck dude, that's all I want to do right there. I'm like, it's, if you just, Take your time, trade. And then he sent me some charts yesterday. No shit. Um, his trading is like night and fucking day. And yeah. all of a sudden, he's he sized down, wide the stops a little bit, making better trades, taking profit. And it's just, it's starting to come together. And then that's how it begins. That is how it begins. And then you, you just keep building on that right there. Just keep building on the same fucking things, man. You know, when brick layers lay bricks, they don't go find 10 different fucking types of bricks to fucking lay. They lay the same fucking brick every goddamn day. Yep. And that same brick, they do the same thing every day. Same, same thing. I'm not going to lay bricks differently today because it's a different day. Yep. I'm going to lay bricks the same way I did yesterday because it worked yesterday. Yeah. And that's what people need to understand. Just keep following through with the same shit. 
Yeah, I think that's a good quote and probably a good one to kind of end it on, James. I know James usually ends it. That was perfect. No, I love it. That was nice, Vic.